Hello, this is lesson number 11, translation. We're finishing the second half of subtopic 2.7, which was about replication, transcription, and translation. We've already done replication and transcription. Now we're just going to do the translation part of this. So here's our list for translation of items from the video. Here, our RES targets are I can analyze the process of translation, its key structures and steps and language target, I can use special vocabulary to describe molecular processes. So just like with replication and transcription, there's a bunch of steps you need to know here. I'll be building off of those processes. There's lots of similarities, so that will help you guys to remember, but be careful to kind of keep in mind the function of these processes, because it's going to be very easy to mix up the three of them. So keep in mind why they do what they do, and the function will help you keep straight which one's doing what and how. Okay, so first things first, this is a nice diagram of translation. Um, so translation is a process of changing the genetic message that we got from our DNA that's stored there um, and carried to us through the mRNA outside the nucleus into a new language. That language is the protein language of polypeptide chain. So transcription is we're copying the message out, the DNA message into an mRNA message, and then translation, we're changing languages completely to protein language from DNA language. Okay. Now, the way this works is that the mRNA has the codons, which are three bases long, three base letters make a codon that codes for a certain amino acid. Um, and the sequence of amino acids it dictates the protein shape, the protein folding. We talked about that a lot in topic two and how protein folding happens. And this is how we get there, like it was 2.4. And that's how we get there in terms of translation. So look at this diagram here. What you can see is you have the messenger RNA here as the blue strand going through the ribosome. Remember we have different size ribosomes in prokaryotes and eukaryotes with 70S and 80S ribosome sizes. Um, and it's gonna feed in and if the three letters on the mRNA are the codons, okay? And they match with what's called the anticodon on the tRNA. So these little ones here, these are tRNAs, the T stands for transfer, they're transfer RNAs, and each one has specific anticodon that will match the codon. Um, and then if the sequences match up exactly, then it will release the amino acid. And the amino acids are attached one another in a growing long chain as we go. Now, the diff three different sites in here don't matter for SL students, HLs, we'll talk about when we do 7.2, um, but for now, it's the idea that we have a growing plug of chain, one amino acid after the other is added in the sequence dictated by the messenger RNA, which of course is the transcription of the DNA message. Okay, remember our ribosomes from topic one. What connections can you make between the structure and function of ribosomes? Why? are they struggling to base their function? Their function is translation, is to do protein synthesis. So why do they look like that? Well, one thing's for sure, they have to have a place for the messenger RNA to pass through, and that's between the small and large subunit. So we have two subunits, the two subunits can um, encase around the messenger RNA, and then they're gonna translate it. Okay, we also have the parts here that are important for moving um, the polypeptides and the TRS will come in from the top and move the message along through the middle part here. Remember, the only difference between ribosomes in eukaryotes and prokaryotes is the size. Eukaryotic ribosomes are slightly larger than prokaryotic ribosomes. And yes, the ID wants you to memorize those numbers. And no, I do not know why they chose that. Okay, let's talk about tRNAs. So tRNAs are these transfer RNAs. Here's different ways you might see them in diagrams. So we have a full kind of globular protein structure here. We have a more of a stretch diagram, and we have here the kind of loop diagram. All three of these are correct. Um, and the end, the bottom of all of them is the anticodon, and at the top of all of them is the amino acid. So um, tRNAs are really important for translation. They're what's going to actually carry the amino acids that create the message. Um, and they each of them has a specific three base anticodon sequence. So here it is here, CUC is the anticodon on this particular amino, particular tRNA, and the amino acid it carries is matching to that, um, that anticodon, that three base sequence. 
So the anticodons are then going to do complementary base pairing to the messenger RNA, to the codons in the messenger RNA, and together, um, if they match up, it will release the amino acid. That's an important note that it has the right amino acids, but they're going in the right order because the order of them is going to dictate the shape of the protein. Remember from topic 2.4, 2.5, the shape of the protein, the shape of the enzyme is critical to its function. So if it doesn't fold properly, it's not going to work. So we have to have the right shape. Now, there are 20 different amino acids that exist, um, and we have 61 codons for them. So how many different tRNAs do you think there are? Well, every codon that carries a codes for an amino acid has to have a tRNA for it. So at least 20. Um, but in fact, there are going to be more than that depending on the species. So 20 depending on the species. Not every species uses all of, the, all of them. And um, some of the codons we have are just start and stop codons, and they don't require an amino acid. So there is quite a bit of variation, and there is many more tRNAs than there are amino acids, if not at least the same amount. Because of all the different anticodons that could code for the same amino acid. Okay, so we're going to complete this diagram we saw earlier. We're taking our mRNA and clearing the polypeptide. So here we had the first step here was the DNA. Our DNA sequence, our genes in three pairs, and then that's going to be transcribed. Remember our process from last time, this is transcription. Turning our, and our DNA into an mRNA by just transcribing or copying one gene only, the gene they want to build to make whatever the cell happens to need. And then we're, the anticodons are going to match. So in reality, these amino acids are actually bonded to the, um, to the anticodon. These are the tRNAs that connect the two. Okay, and then this process here, this is translation, where the anticodons match up with the codons to create the polypeptide chain. Okay, so we have transcription and translation. You have to have transcription to then have translation. If there's no mRNA, nothing will be transcribed. Nothing will be translated because nothing to translate. Okay, this is a codon chart. Now, codon charts are very... Um, useful way to figure out which amino acid is coded by which codon. Now notice it's called a codon chart and not an anticodon chart. So you need to make sure you're reading the codons off the mRNA and not off the tRNAs. Okay? Um, and the nice thing is it's already in the name for you. It's not called an anticodon chart like it would be if it was for tRNA. It's called a codon chart like it is because it's for mRNA. So take a quick look at this. How can we use this? Well, there's three letters in each codon. If you look here, the column on your left has the first letter of the codon. So all the ones in this row start with A, all the ones here start with G, they start with C, or they start with U. The second letter is in the column at the top. So we have, these are all UUs, these are U, uh, CUs, AUs, GUs, etc., all the way through. And then it codes for what the actual amino acid is. So most of the time in biology, we use a three-letter um, symbol for the amino acid for the entire name. So, for example, val means valine, thu is leucine, pro is proline, ala is alanine, that kind of thing. Um, instead of writing the entire name to save some time, there's also is a one letter code, which you can see here is V, I, L, F, P, T. Um, for if we have a really long gene you're working with, you want to break it down to smaller parts, and we do so by using um, a single letter to help them, some more parts, but just to make it more concise way to write a long sequence. You know, you don't have to memorize this chart. It will be given to you always, or some version of it given to you on IB exam questions, tests, quizzes, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, but you need to know how to use it by yourself. There's no instructions that comes with it. Um, you also have to be able to notice here we have some start and stop codons. What, where are those? What do you see? So the start codon is here, AUG, that makes the amino acid methionine or MET, and always, always is the first codon in the mRNA. And then to stop translation, we have three different options. We have UAA, UAG, or UGA. Any of those three will stop translation. 
Okay, so I'm going to talk through the steps of this. I want you to make some notes and practice taking notes from a lecture style lesson, and then we'll have some um, information written down for you who can copy to double check your stuff afterwards as well, okay? But soon you'll be in university, and taking notes from lecture is an important skill, so we're going to do a little bit of practice whenever it kind of works in the lesson, and now is one of those moments. So, first things first. The messenger RNA or mRNA has left the nucleus of the cell after being transcribed. So the mRNA is coding for a certain gene to make a protein. Let's say this one's coding for hemoglobin. It's going to enter into the ribosome and be kind of uh, sandwiched in the small, small and large subunit of the ribosome. And we'll start to transcribe it in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction to translate it. So what happened is we're going to start with the start codon AUG and the correct tRNA with the amino acid that matches for the anticodon on the tRNA will match up with the codon on the mRNA and release the polypeptides. As the peptides are entering the P site, they will bind together and they'll have a peptide bond forming and making a longer and longer chain of amino acids in order. So we have glycine, serine, glucine, valine, so glutamate, valine, lysine, cysteine, tyrosine, um, glycine again, and a long sequence that will translate the entire mRNA into one chain of amino acids. That chain is called a positive chain, and it's also known as a primary structure of the protein, which will then fold to make a certain shape. When we get to a stop codon at the end, and there's it codes for a stop, it will just stop doing translation, the ribosome will end, and it will release the mRNA. Now that same mRNA can be translated more than one time, um, depending on the cell systems to maintain that. Okay, so here we go. Here's the steps. Our newly transcribed and processed mRNA leaves the nucleus and enters cytoplasm. So it's important to remember always that in eukaryotes we have a membrane-bound nucleus. The DNA is kept. It's kept nice and safe in that environment. Step two, the ribosome breaks apart and binds to the 5' end of the mRNA and looks for the start codon, which is AUG. A transfer RNA or tRNA with the matching three base anticodons, the mRNA codon, is going to match up and release its amino acid into the chain. The tRNA, which has lost the amino acid, is then going to move outside to the next site, and then into the E site or the exit site, and leave. And the new tRNA with the correct anticodon for the next mRNA codon is going to match up, use a peptide bond, and attach everything. So getting this chain of amino acids or polypeptides being formed. Okay. Step five, ribosome continues to match up the anticodon on the tRNAs with the codons on the mRNA, slowly building up this polypeptide chain using peptide bonds, attaching the amino acids one to another as we go through. Now as this is happening, if you watch the animations of this, you'll see how the, the protein starts to fold immediately as it leaves. So we're folding the shape of the particular amino acid, of the particular protein as it goes. Step six, the ribosome reaches a stop codon like UAA, UAG, or UGA, which tells it to stop doing translation. And step seven, the tRNAs are going to move off into the cytoplasm. They're going to be reloaded with the right amino acid for next time, and the right enzymes, and the newly formed protein is released to the cytoplasm to do its own thing. Okay, so back to topic two. Do you remember how peptide bonds are formed? So we had to remember this from topic two, and you have to be able to draw this from memory. So keeping in mind here, we're talking about how we have our OH group on one amino acid and the hydrogen the amino acid on the amino group, and they're going to form together a bond, releasing a water. Okay. So what kind of reaction is this? We're forming a water. Topic two, do you remember? It's condensation reaction. And we know because water is formed. And this is going to be a covalent bond or an ionic bond. Definitely covalent. These are all nine metals we're looking at here. Okay, again, you've seen this before. Here are all the different amino acids. You can see how the R groups here, or the side groups, these are all different. And these give them different kinds of properties. Uh, 
So these different kinds of properties are going to allow it to fold the different shapes. So for example, positive and negative will be attracted to each other. Um, we have nonpolar is going to be on the inside, polar on the outside. That kind of thing helps form the structure of the protein. So we're back on topic two for topic 2.4, um, which is about chemical properties determine how the polypeptide chain is going to fold. So what we just talked about translation is making this primary structure of this chain. And the folding happens based on the amino acids properties. So polar amino acids go to the outside, non-polar go to the inside. Um, and then the quaternary structure, the last part here, is when you have multiple polypeptides are going to come together to make a protein. Not all proteins have a quaternary structure, um, but a lot of the ones you had to know for this course do. So again, remembering from last year, here are the different proteins you have to memorize the structure of. So we have immunoglobin, which are antibodies. We have herbisco and enzyme for photosynthesis. We have insulin, the hormone for blood glucose level. We have collagen. Uh, we have rhodopsin, a pigment that allows our eyes to sense light. Collagen for giving us to connective tissues, spider silk to give us to spider webs. Very strong, stronger than steel. Just a reminder of those things, all these topics, of course, are connected, and you need to remember stuff that happened last year as you prepare your exams. All right, here's your key ideas. Give them a read and check for understanding. Okay, so here's the codon chart again. You're going to want to use this. Um, you can find a PDF version of this on Schoology. It's also our copies in the classroom that are limited. You're welcome to use in class time. And as I said before, anytime I test your equation, you need to work with this, you will be given it, including on the IB exam. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to know how to use it. Okay? So, let's do some practice. So here we have DNA, and you can wait to pause it. So all I want you to do is pause the video, Take some time and fill in what is the mRNA version of the transcription of that DNA, and what's the anticodon for that codon, and what's the amino acid. Use the chart to fill this out. Work with the classmate to check each other's work. So pause the video, do the first one, and then you can hit play to check your work. Okay, so the first one here are the answers. Oh, and the second one too, apparently. It's all in one. So there's all the answers. Please check your work. And if you don't know how to use the codon chart to figure out the amino acids, then you need to get some help to fix that. Talk to your teacher, talk to a classmate, um, get some resources to help you make sure you know how that works. Okay, and then the amino acids here from the anticodons are arginine. And these are from the codons, right? So reading from the codon part here, not the anticodon part. So reading it from this part, these codons make up the amino acids. Okay, so check your work and make sure you're good to go. Okay, here's your key ideas for this part of the lesson. Read them over, write them down, double check if you have any questions. Okay, and this website, Learn Genetics from Utah University, is a really great um, website that has animated videos, interactive things to help you understand transcription and translations. So they have their transcribe into the gene activity. There's the, um, the link. You can also use screenshots to practice supporting synthesis, things to help you as well for that. The more these processes you practice, 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 the better. Um, and this is one more tool to help you do so. All right, guys, this was a helpful lesson for you. And we'll be moving on to the HL version of this next. Take care.